Hey, what's going on, everybody? Aaron here, get a Jetta 13 on VitaVortex.com. I've got a lot of written DIYs out there, less than average builds on Instagram. Right next to me, I've got my less than average build, and so I titled it. It is the 2000 Volkswagen Passat 30 bow I'm building out. Today, I'm going to be addressing the exhaust manifold. What I'm trying to do is tap that so that I can run a sensor for an EGT gauge, which is exhaust gas temps. And that's kind of a good fail safe anytime you're boosting something to keep your, uh, basically an eye on your head temperatures. So I will run through the parts I'm gonna be using as well as the tools and then a few helpful tips that I've found um, doing my research before I wanted to start the task. All right, so I've shuffled the motor back into the bay. Try to mock things up as best as possible. Here I've got my sensor. It's already bent at a 90 degree. Some of these already come bent. Some of them are straight and you can bend them to your discretion. I chose this guy off the sensor connection and I'll send a link to that guy. Um, but this is really suitable for my application. It does that hard 90 and goes straight back to the firewall there. So it looks like I'm going to be able to keep in line with cylinder 3 here and tap right in. So. I am going to do it right here. I'm also going closer to the edge. It's a flat surface, but I also make, need to make sure that the overhang from the uh, top of the head here is gonna be able to clear in case I ever need to pull this guy out. Now we're just pulling the motor back out. I'll take off that header. Start drilling. All right guys, here I've got my lovely workspace. Both of my workbenches are full of parts going into the build. I don't want to disrupt that. So I just went out, bought myself another vise, mounted it down here, and I'm gonna show you the tools I'm gonna be working with. Obviously got my exhaust manifold here. I've got a variable speed drill over here. I've got a corded one that works a lot better, but I'm gonna go with the weaker guy just to be able to control things uh, better on the initial uh, plunge. I've got some tap magic for the drilling. You can get that at any local hardware store. Really helps to keep things lubricated both when you're doing the initial hole as well as doing the tapping. And then after that, we're gonna move to the actual tap bit here. This is a 1-8-27 pipe tap here. And the difference between a pipe and a straight cut is that the pipe is actually tapered. You can see it a little bit here. And when you use a tapered tap, um, your fitting that you screw in is actually going to self-seal so there won't be a need for a gasket or a washer of any sorts and that's what we're going for here. Alright, I didn't film it because I didn't want to get nervous in front of everyone. But this DeWalt carbide bit went straight through the exhaust manifold. It went really well. Um, you can see I pulled some really nice chips here. I'm no expert at this. You go nice and slow on your drill speed with plenty of pressure. That's how you get through it without getting any sort of heat stress um, and hardening in the area that you're trying to work. You really want to go slow and make sure you're getting perpendicular and that you don't let the drill walk around at all. So you just get a nice even hold to tap. Um, the tap magic was also super helpful and it took me maybe two minutes to get through this guy. If you got this guy in a vise, just make sure that you're not clamping down too hard. I probably should have put some cardboard here, but I've also got brand new gaskets, so I'm not too worried. Alright, with my hole successfully drilled, I'm setting up my tap. I've got my 18-27 pipe here that's tapered. Um, you can also pick up these tap handles at any local hardware store. I think this guy on Amazon was like 9 or 10 bucks. I got two of them just in case. These guys are a little more expensive, I don't know, like 20 bucks, but it's definitely good to invest in something with longer handles so that you can have enough uh, power behind it. Um, I also have my tap magic on hand that I'm going to be using, and I also found a little... Um, helpful information if you have a drill press at home you're able to get an extension here uh, I forgot what it's called but basically you can put that in the chuck of your drill press and that'll keep you 
super perpendicular as long as your uh, jig for your part is perpendicular and you get that nice um, perpendicular threading here. So you got to go nice and slow to make sure you keep it perpendicular again. Sorry for saying that word so many times. Um, you just want to make sure you get really fluid movement. Uh, and you're not forcing it, you're going slow. So they talk about doing like a half a turn and then a quarter turn. And then half a turn and quarter turn. Um, don't be afraid to use tap magic. Um, and also incrementally pull out the tap blow it out with air or clean it out if you need to to get those chips out of the way that way you're not binding and messing up your bit or the threads you're actually trying to produce all right so i've got it started uh, it was a little challenging at first because i wasn't sure just how much pressure to apply and i really wanted to make sure i got that perpendicular uh, drive with it um, it's a bit challenging as well because these bits I mean, just like they're supposed to be designed, um, don't have as much engagement to begin with. So it does set you up for success. Um, if you go nice and slow, you are going to be able to grab that um, and have it bite eventually. But don't be afraid if it takes you a few turns or two to get that going. So now I've got it going. And with a tapered bit, you also want to make sure that you're tapping what you need. You don't want to be driving this all the way down because then you end up just completely blowing out your tapered portion here. So you want to be able to gauge your material here. And uh, to be honest, I don't have a proper gauge for that. Um, if I didn't have the inlet here, I'd be able to do it with some calipers. So right now I'm really just um, eyeballing it, but then I'm also taking a look in here um, with some light and making sure I can see when my tap is fully passed through because really I don't want to pass this tap through any more than I have to. So another tip that I kind of found uh, when I was getting this started is body positioning. Um, really critical to be comfortable. You don't want to be over it too far or back too far getting a weird angle on it. Another thing that helps is also just kind of placing your hand over the um, drive so that you are not kind of like pushing from an angle or pushing and pulling at angles so if you kind of get one hand going and the other is the driver that seems to really help all right I'm nearly through I just saw the tip through the um, flange I just keep checking that intermittently to make sure that I only tap what I need make sure I get the tip through that's what she said and then I'll back it out and test the threading and I'm also um, being very liberal with the cutting fluid here. If you feel too much resistance, back it out, clean it out. I would suggest not doing that until you know you've got a few good threads to begin with. You don't want to just totally obliterate um, your first few threads then it'll be even harder to actually get it started so try to make your way down a good amount so you have something to come back to all right little air just gonna Pull off any of the burrs here. I've passed through, but I want to give it one more go just to make sure I don't uh, leave anything to chance. All right, so I pulled the tap out. I stuck a caliper in there, and we were right at about six mil. So what I did is I just held that against where the actual thread engagement would start on my tap here. Looks like, sorry it's out of focus, that I've uh, made my complete pass through, so I'm going to call this one um, good right now and then give it a try. So I attempted to thread my fitting on my sensor in and it was a little too tight so I didn't force anything. I pulled the sensor out and I started to make a deeper pass with the, um, with the tap and you can see that I'm slowly working my way farther up this guy. 
um, slowly getting into the thicker end of the taper here. So I'm just gonna do that incrementally to make sure that I get myself a nice fitment without too much stress or too much slack in the uh, thread pitch. All right, I think I'm happy with it. So I made one final pass. I think that was three total passes on this guy. I've got about two threads left here. The uh, fitting body, uh, I can see um, starting to make its way through um, on the inside of the manifold here. So I'm comfortable with how much engage engagement I have uh, and I'm comfortable with how tight this threading is getting. So I'm gonna get a nice tight seal. So um, the last thing I'm gonna have to do during install is actually just screw this guy in place. But this is kind of like a one-time uh, compression fitting here. So as of right now, without this screwed down, um, this is not air tight and then I will just simply tighten that guy up when I'm ready to do the install and we'll be all good. Um, the last bit of information on an install for an EGT probe here um, is the reason for the compression fitting is so that you can dictate the amount of engagement or the amount of um, intrusion that probe has into your exhaust manifold and you basically want to have that right in the um, middle of your pass through for your um, exhaust manifold so hey guys thanks for sticking with me on that one um i know it's not super appealing to watch stuff like this but i'll just try and make an edit so just cut right to the information that you need um again that sensor setup was with the pro wire harness and everything, one kit from the sensor connection out in Michigan. Uh, really happy with the quality there. Website's super easy to navigate. You just wanna make sure that you're picking this uh, correct application, whether it's gonna be gas or diesel or anything else. Uh, they've got online, I think it was like 150 bucks for the full kit and shipped really fast. So um, hopefully I can show you guys uh, digital readouts here when the car gets going in a month or so. Take care.